So, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to the breakout session sponsored by Cox Automotive uh, and RMS uh, Automotive. For these sessions, Sebastian Fuchs, Managing Director of Mannheim and RMS Automotive Continental Europe for Cox Automotive, will introduce the vendor and buyer trends influencing the reinventation of the process that sits at the heart of the used vehicle marketplace. So as I explained to you already, so please feel free to share your questions into the chat of the sessions, of course. So um, now, so let's start now the presentations, uh, Sebastian. So I, uh, the, the, the virtual stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And if you could be so nice to um, share the questions, page mode, see the questions, um, that'd be great. Can you see the screen? Is it coming through? Oh, and it might have muted me or you now. Yeah. Hello. Yes, Sebastian. Yes. Okay, that's good. We, we can see your presentation now. Sorry, Daniel, can you say that again? I, did, I didn't understand the word. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. So you can start and uh, after your presentation, I will moderate so the Q&A, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll, so um, I let you. I hear you very distorted. I hope that the quality of the sound on the other side is better. We, we, we can hear you, we can hear you, that's fine. Okay, perfect, then I'll start. So welcome, first of all, um, yeah, my name is Sebastian Fuchs. I'm the Managing Director for Mannheim and RMS Automotive for Continental Europe um, in Cox Automotive Europe. And um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you today about reimagining the remarketing, um, but that doesn't obviously work if you don't talk about the um, wider uh, present, uh, the, the wider market and what's happening. So I've prepared a couple of slides today to walk you through what is um, on the market happening and um, yeah, We're, what are we actually doing? For those of you who don't know Cox Automotive, we, we are mainly present in continental Europe with um, three brands, Manheim Express, Modix, and RMS Automotive. And feel free to go to the booths that are um, online here in, in, the, in the village and inform yourself and contact the colleagues that are here from a sales perspective. Um, but I will end the sales pitch at this moment in time. Um, just want to highlight as well from my uh, from a from a personal perspective, you might recognize that I'm wearing a unusual style. I'm wearing a mustache, which is um, for me a little little personal um, something that I've been doing this year. I've, I've been joining the Movember um, donation, and um, yeah, would um, like to raise your awareness and uh, and um, attention to. Yeah, what, what the the Movember charity and um, the the topics around men, men's health that it um, actually takes care about. You can have a look after the presentations. But now, no further ado, how do we talk about um, the uh, the re reimagination of the remarketing sector? Let's start with what is it really? It is really a traditional sector that has for many many years not changed and um, you know the picture that you see here right now you can see the uh, part, big part of the world um, a lot of cars going through physical online for physical auctions um, those have been supplemented over the years by um, by video solutions so that you had simulcast situations where basically online and in lane bidders would bid against each other but also a lot of um, a lot of business was done like the gentleman here on the right with the headset is doing um, over the phone and um, with Excel spreadsheets, with dispersed systems, with listings and that kind of stuff. Now, all this um, you, you think um, has come has come slowly to an end and various various um, partners in the market have, have changed or various actors in the, mar in the market have changed lately as uh, they go about this. Um, so what's the real disruption uh, in the market that, that we want to talk about now? Um, and, and why is it that we, we're still talking about this change um, in 2020? Um, let, me, let me take this back one step. I think what we've seen over the years is a lot of dispersed solutions that are island solutions market by market or 
brand by brand or channel by channel. And this is where the big disruption is now happening. Um, the, the market is entering a time where basically you need to, to think solution interconnected and not only um, a remarketing portal, a transport portal, a payment portal, um, or independent digital retailing or digital wholesaling. It's all about interconnecting and basically creating those spheres that can work together. Um, and we've we've come up in in Cox Automotive with a little study that we've uh, where we've anticipated what is that going to mean. So um, brought here a couple of slides for you on or points of that that what what are we thinking this will actually mean? So if you look at um, the, the the sales, we do assume that by 2023, about 80 percent of the cars will be sold online. Um, and some of you might now say. Well, COVID-19 has probably accelerated this already beyond those 80%. And we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, 360 degree um, experiences have, have become the normal or the new normal. Um, the vehicle movements, we do think they will definitely um, yeah, reduce because of the um, more modern ways of, of selling cars, but also the direct ways of selling cars so instead of getting a car from a location into a compound then from a compound to a next location um, a lot of times upstream remarketing will happen and then a car will, will be moved once instead of twice um, days to sell we do assume by by all these measures might go down as much as 60 percent um, and then the uh this decision that today very often is still driven by by human beings on how and where you will sell the car would probably be to a big, big um, portion automated in the future. Um, and last but not least, and I think this is one of the biggest changes, technology and data will become really agnostic and transparent. So um, I learned where during my studies a, a wonderful world of ubiquity um, basically means that everything is available everywhere at any moment in time for you. And I think this will be for a lot of data that was hard to get over the last years. The case will be the case in the next three to five years so that data driven decisions will become the new norm as well. So in terms of COVID-19, I mean, I, I talked about this already, but what it has done to all of this is really this, it's acted like an injection of rocket fuel. The amount of um, dealers and remarketing actors that have in the last 12 months switched, changed, adapted, enhanced, or completely um, revolutionized the way they've sold cars is, is unbelievable. And um, it is quite interesting when you're out in the market nowadays and you speak to the actors in the market, those dealers and actors that have acted in the first lockdowns are right now in those second lockdown scenarios striving. They're actually not seeing big drops in their in their business. Um, so it's really important that you have that digitization at the forefront and it will be it will be a decisive factor um, in the in the next in the next um, years if if you're on the journey or not. So let's talk about what what are the the trends that you look at when when you have um, when you do this um, when we look at uh, the way OEMs sell cars it's predominantly um, it's been predominantly via dealers um, and there is a big trend here to go um, direct um, digital sales via the via the dealer networks but first and foremost, um, actually online. For this, you de definitely need connected ecosystems. So the OEM, the dealer network, the national sales company, the customer need to ultimately have a platform on which they can communicate with each other and interact with each other. Um, there, is a, there is a big culture in the, in the millennials and the upcoming buyer generations that are actually looking at 
self-service culture. So instead of being served or being treated by a salesman, a lot of the younger generation, a lot of the buyers that are coming up now are looking to self-serve. And this will actually go down and trickle down in the workforce. So if you're, an, if you're a company that, that wants to be successful um, and, and recruiting young talent in the future, uh, your, your processes probably need to be able to reflect that self-service culture um, also in the way you engage your, uh, your employees. Omni-channel omni sales, um, absolutely critical. Uh, there won't be isolated sales channels like, th like there are right now. Um, there will be definitely an attempt to sell a car at the same time wholesale as, as well as retail. So that basically, depending on where you are with your, with your KPIs, depending on where you are with your, with your cash um, position, you can make a choice whether you need to execute on a wholesale channel um, and, and expedite some, some cars or whether you actually have the, re the right retail channel and um, the make that extra, extra money from the retail channel. Uh, all this is going to be it's going to be led by data driven decision making and and that's really the big um the big game changer going forward the data technologies um have improved over the last few years dramatically the transparency of data the availability and the um integration of data into operational systems is one of the key game changers going forward um so let's talk a little bit more about the OEM strategies uh, and uh, what it actually means. The, the OEMs, a lot of the OEMs that are out there for many, many years obviously have uh, a dealer network and they cannot skip that dealer network and they don't want necessarily to skip that dealer network, yet they want to have that direct relationship with the consumers. Um, so it's really important that they have this agility to have a system landscape that can actually reflect both scenarios, both ways, um, a sell via a uh, dealer or agent network, and at the same time have access straight to that customer to be able to engage and um, basically harvest that future relationship. Because as you've probably seen this morning on some of the other presentations, um, there is a big trend now with the in-car platforms, with, with the mobility schemes and the new ways of using cars in the future to really actually go into the conversation and dialogue with the customer much more um, in the life cycle. So instead of where we are today, where a car gets sold once, is used by um, a user, a fleet for a couple of months, years, um, and there is really no revenue outside from maintenance and the occasional service. Um, the OEMs are going to go and look into what, what actually can they sell via the integrated um, media platforms in the cars. And being on top of that and being able to have a framework and a ecosystem a system that connects that um, is really important. Now, if we focus back on the remarketing story, uh, and I've, um, I've used here three of our brands, but it could be any brand um, that, that, really, that really should work together. If you think about, um, if you're a, any, any uh, fleet owner or uh, OEM, you'd, you'd use our RMS system in this case as the inventory management system um, that would give you white labeled, closed environment, remarketing platforms, and um, you could from there push cars onto the retail side, which in our case is Modix, um, customer, de customer pages, dealer landing pages, um, but also use car locators where then consumers can go and find the car. Or you push those cars, if you can't sell them to your own channels, into the open market channels. And I use Manam Express here as, as one of our examples, but that's a wholesale channel then. So basically this is like where you have a connected ecosystem of wholesale and retail that is all steered from one system um, in the middle, but it reaches out in parallel and basically creates that wonderful little competition. 
that, that you ultimately want to have to um, turn your cars quicker. Now, I've talked about self-service culture before, and I've just brought two examples here uh, from, from, uh, from our world uh, where, you know, we have, um, where we've seen a huge change over the last years in terms of like how cars get actually online people people nowadays want to quickly upload a car it needs to be a app based process that is interconnected that enriches your car with data that serves you third party pricing data that cleans your backdrop um like you can see on the left hand side that that white um tiguan here that has actually um the backdrop cleaned um or these kind of things dealers want to be able or, or sellers want to be able to to be to, to do this at their leisure um reduce complexity of the process and, and really come to a point where they can sell cars extremely fast um so having that kind of functionality at the tip of your hand interconnected with all of your other systems really important that you have that possibility for your teams to work independently and don't need to wait for certain suppliers partners to come in do it all yourself have it digitally enhanced whisked over um added or enriched by, with, uh, with with third-party data and off you go all in the control in the, of your of the palm of your hand and now let's talk for a minute about the real big changer, artificial intelligence. Um, I've brought a example here um, that, that I wanted to, to put your attention to. Um, using data to sell cars is one thing and a lot, of, a lot of you probably do use data today already, but combining artificial intelligence and data to drive decisions and automate decisions is going to be one of the big game changers that 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 we will see in the future um there are um, already use cases out there but it's definitely something that in the next years will take over the the manual processes and the data analysis that happen today um are far too far too um, labor intensive uh, as as that they could be um, continued in the future. So that's going to be the revolution, the, the, the workforce revolution 4.0, um, building those, building those remarketing platforms that can give you at the same time, demand data, remarketing data, re transaction data, um, but also your stock and inflow data. Um, and, at the, and, at the, and then combine this and optimize it with transportation costs, taxations, different price level of different markets. If you can have all that into a big data cube that then spits out the, the, the optimized um, remarketing route for you, that's, that's where you want to end up. And that's the vision that you need to have. And that's just one area of, of usage of artificial intelligence. Um, today so i hope i hope you've enjoyed that um, and i want to close with a statement around the future um, and one that probably you should all bear in mind we've all gone through some very very tough times over the last few months with um with covid and there's there's going to be a couple of tough months ahead of us but the one thing that we got to keep in mind is the only thing that will take us back where we were is ourselves so it's in your hands to make the right decisions that you actually don't have to go back to the old world to a certain degree and you can actually reap the benefits of all those new developments that are there um and and yeah um win over you, yourself the future and um don't come back to the past probably with that i'll um close my presentation. I've uh, rushed it a little bit because I was a little bit late and I wanted to have the five to 10 minutes for Q and A. So yeah, I'm gonna, you, um, you, stop the presentation here. Thank you, Sebastian. You are perfectly on time. So that's perfect. So. <laughs>
thank you. Um, so thank you very much for this interesting um, uh, presentation. So I have a question uh, for you, Sebastian. Um, what are the different fields of usage for the artificial intelligence? It's a very good question, Daniel. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, uh, I mean, I've, I've obviously talked about the, the, the price area here. Um, but I think the other part that is really, um, really uh, interesting is usage around damage recognition, um, but also in the service and in the consumer in the consumer engagement, usage of conversational AI bots that can actually take over a lot of the workload of what today is done by by people, um, take complexity out of the conversation answer a lot of the questions that are probably standard questions. Give you a good example. I can't log on to my screen uh, or I can't log on to my, to my system. Um, this is, is a question that probably a lot of service departments spend a lot of time. If you could automate the answer to that and link and send the, send the customer in the chat right to where he needs to unlock himself, that will self, save, save your team a lot of time. Um, but also when it comes to the damage recognition, um, nowadays we have um, costly people going around cars looking at every scratch and dent. Um, there are new technologies that have been discussed today as well a couple of times, be it static or uh, mobile solutions that are really ready now to break through. And it will be, we're at this infliction point where it's time to start using these. Um, be it all by with a couple of learning curves in the first few months. Um, I think it's time to to make a make a conscious move to use these technologies and enhance and speed up these processes and ultimately drive down your remarketing cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sebastian. So, um, so we will close now the, this this session. Uh, thank you for all people to attending. Um, and so the next uh, meeting now, I would say, is the networking for sure, is uh, uh, the possibility as well, if you want to have uh, more information about base solutions, uh, you can go on to the village and visit uh, the RMS boots, automotive boots or Cox boots as well. Uh, so you have a different boot, so, or you can get directly in get in touch with uh, Sebastian for more information. Uh, next next, uh, next uh, key meeting so is at 3.30 for the expected Fleet Europe Award ceremony, of course, uh, that uh, I'm sure that nobody can miss, of course. Uh, thank you very much for attending. See you later and enjoy so the Remarketing Forum and the Fleet Europe Summit. Thanks. Bye-bye.